Welcome to the Electrical and Electronic Engineering Lecture Series. Your anchor person is Professor Michael C. Ndinechi. Our topic today still remains Types and Structure of General Purpose Computers, Part 7. If you recall in the previous models, we talked about the components of a computer system and agreed that there are basically three the hardware, the software, and the purposeware. So today we are going to look at the purposeware. In other words, we are going to look at the professionals who take place to participate in computer and computing machine. A computer professional is one who has become proficient in any area of computer studies. In any computer environment, people are involved in different ways according to their area of specialization. It could be in system analysis, system operations, system programming, system maintenance, sales, and data processing. Other users outside these uh, stated ones are classified as users. Therefore, a user is anyone who comes in contact directly or indirectly with the computer system. Before we continue, please follow in this engineering lecture series by subscribing to my YouTube channel, https slash youtube.com slash at C. Like, share, and drop your comments in the comment section or reach out to me using my email addresses. You can listen to my introductory lecture on computers in model 006. Also, I expect you to listen to model 014, part 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and 6 at my YouTube channel. Doing that will help you to understand today's topic better. So, the term user is generally applied to persons who interact directly with computers using any one of the application's software. We have defined application software in the previous lecture models. Typical users of application software include secretaries in the office, accountants, managers, engineers, etc. Examples of application software include any spreadsheet program like Excel, which is one, two, three, database management systems, Microsoft Word, MATLAB, and so on. The people who work in any computer environment can be classified into groups to enable us to describe some of their common characteristics. We start by looking at the group which we call the system operators. Once a system has been designed, documented, and programmed, and starts to be used for routine processing operations, it becomes the responsibility of the system operator. Operators are expected to keep a log, a log recording of the utilization of the machine time and to report any issues resulting in the loss of machine time. They keep records of whether this downtime arose through mechanical failures or defects in the input data or program codes. The operator has a continuous two-way flow of work which include collecting source data and sending out reports. Also, 
the operator must work to quite rigid timetable. He must ensure that reports are available where required. He must ensure that input data is ready for processing when needed. And he must ensure efficient and effective usage of the available machine time. The next group of people are the systems analysts. A system analyst is a computer professional who starts from a complex problem and breaks it down into smaller units so as to tackle the problem and arrive at a result. The system analyst aims at the design of a system that can be so processed. It entails three main functions. One, investigation into and analysis of existing systems. Two, the design of systems for computer application to attain predetermined aims. And three, the implementation of the new system. Success in the investigation and design of a system depends to a large extent on the ability of the systems analyst to enlist the cooperation of members of staff involved. The analyst must therefore be a person who can mix easily with people and communicate effectively. Other qualities required of an analyst include capacity for logical thinking, high standard of accuracy, patience, facts and ability to record his work clearly and concisely. Systems analysts usually have three main tasks. The first one is forward planning, that is investigation of systems that are planned for the fairly distant future. Two, current development, that is the detailed specification of systems plan for implementation in the near future. And finally, implementation of the system itself. The next group of people are the programmers. The programmers usually take over when the system analyst has completed the design of a new system and has documented the design in the form of system specifications. Programmers develop the codes that make the hardware perform the functions specified by the analyst. Programmers are often referred to as coders. Two qualities required of a programmer are, one, ability to reason logically and to pay very careful attention to details. Two, ability to document programs which, with complete accuracy to conform with recognized standards. Next set of group are the systems engineers. So these are the people that maintain the system, service them, and carry out troubleshooting when the system is down. The system engineer is responsible for hardware specifications to meet the needs of a particular user. With a vast knowledge in computer hardware and their working relationship with the peripheral devices, the systems engineer is the best person to be the sales representative of a computer vendor. Now, we have spent time looking at general purpose computer. It is important that we talk of job opportunities in the digital economy era, powered by proficiency in computer technology. We've looked at the people that work in the computer environment, systems analysts, 
the programmers, the engineers. Now, for people to be relevant in modern time, which we call the digital economy era, they must be proficient in one aspect of computer to be relevant in the job opportunities in the digital economy era. So we start by saying that the International Labour Organization, ILO, has posited that ICT-related industries recorded a high employment during the COVID-19 pandemic. The era saw many people working from home. People without adequate computer knowledge found themselves in obvious disadvantage. Without doubt, there was digital scale gap in both developed and developing economies with the attendant variances in wages and job opportunities at that time. This scale, this scale gap has continued to widen even more in the post-COVID-19 era. Therefore, the digital economy era will continue to be driven by emerging and disruptive technology jobs in the following sectors. Data analytics, Internet of Things, artificial intelligence, machine learning, coding with relevant tools, app development, 3D printing, cloud computing, blockchain technologies, cyber securities, fintech companies, embedded systems, printed circuit board designs, microprocessor programming, and so on and so forth. So it is very necessary that you update yourself on basic computer knowledge, how computers function, so that you can fall into any of these groups in the digital economy era, which we are in now. Thank you for listening. And this module part seven ends our lectures on basic computer engineering knowledge. Subsequently, we'll be looking at the real hardware design of computer engineering that will give us insight to the more internal workings of 